What is up everyone? Today we are back with another Mac Pro Early 2008 versus Retina MacBook Pro Late 2013 video. Last time we did the boot up and shutdown race, which is just a bit of fun. It's not very scientific, but you know, it is good fun, like I said in that video. But today we are back with an actual benchmark. Today we're going to start pretty simply and we're just going to talk about disk speeds. I thought this was pretty relevant because the boot up and the shutdown race does indeed rely heavily on the speed of the startup disk of course because it seeks the operating system on startup from the startup disk and of course this application which is called black Ma black magic disk speed test i think it is yeah black magic disk speed test this is the app that tests the speed of your disks you can select whatever disk to test the speed of but of course we are pretty much primarily only concerned about the startup disk because this will give us a good indication as to why we received the results that we did in the boot up and shutdown race not that shutdown heavily depends on the disk speed it's mainly the boot up but yeah so this application black magic has become pretty much the standard default application in the mac app store that people are using to test their disk speeds i suppose that's because it's free and also it's easy to use and it gives a nice clear readout now there will be screenshots of the results at the end of the video so stay tuned for that of course um, but yeah I'm not going to do any fancy screen recording or whatever we're just going to keep it raw point the camera at the screens and see what we get so we are going to start with the Mac Pro to see what we get so I'd like to stress that all applications are indeed shut on both systems, or should I say closed rather. Um, the only thing running is the Blackmagic um, disk speed test, and also, you know, things like Dropbox and stuff in the background, but that doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so this is my Mac Pro. It's got a Samsung 830 SSD in it, 256 gig gigabytes attached to its built-in SATA 2 interface. Um, so let's give it a whirl. Start. So... This SSD is a SATA 3 SSD, and as you can see, not too bad on the right there. And surprisingly, the read is actually a little bit lower. So that's very surprising. Okay, the write is actually quicker than the read. That is interesting. So if we just stop it there then, and I will indeed screenshot this to include at the end of the video. If we look down here, <laughs> we've got quite a few crosses, but let's go, let's go back up here for a second. So personally, I am very impressed with those results, guys. Um, I may pick up a SATA 3 PCIe card just to see how much of a difference it makes, because someone left a comment on my um, boot up and shut down video saying that they're available relatively cheaply and I'd like to see how much of a difference that makes. Um, it probably will make quite a bit of difference because I know the Samsung 830 is capable of much more than this but 250 on write and 200 on read is definitely a, a result that I'm really happy with and what we'll do at the end actually after testing the MacBook Pro is we'll change the target disk to a hard drive that I have in the system so that you can see how much of an improvement adding an SSD in a system like this is even though it doesn't have the latest SATA interface revision so that's the Mac Pro 250 on write 200 on read not too bad at all I was expecting it to be the other way around but yeah that's interesting let's take a look at the MacBook Pro and see what we get there so of course here we are on my retina MacBook Pro late 2013 I normally say 2013 that was a bit odd um, this has 256 gigabytes of PCIe attached flash storage which is pretty much the dog's bollocks of storage so you will probably see that in this result let's just start it and see what we can do with this here we go, pretty excited, haven't done this yet. Start. <laughs> Boom, straight over. Damn. Okay, so that's the write speed and the read speed. Whoa, okay. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so let's stop it there. Let's go. <laughs> We've only got one cross, okay. So we are talking about 720 in read and about 650 in write. Um, yeah, that is crazy, crazy phenomenal. So as you guys can probably tell, that is pretty much why this guy won the boot up race. So let me screenshot this quickly so that I can include it at the end of the video. 
Wow, this is this is pretty mega. You can see why this is such a speedy machine to work around. You know, things like opening applications and that, everything is just there right in front of you all the time. It's always two steps ahead of you. And I can't imagine a system being any quicker than this, uh, sort of, you know, loading files and, and opening applications and stuff. It's absolutely bonkers. So that is a really cool result, guys. Um, so, so ridiculously quick. It, it just impresses the hell out of me. I absolutely love it. Um, of course, that is double, maybe triple the speed of the SSD in the Mac Pro. But what we're gonna do now is go back up to the Mac Pro and take a little look at the results that you'd get with a standard hard drive. So here we are back on the Mac Pro, guys. Now, let's just go into settings here. Select target disk and we are gonna choose media because media is not a slow hard drive by any means. That is a one terabyte Western Digital black drive, which is regarded as pretty much one of the speediest 7200 RPM drives you can put in your system, you know? You've got things like blues and greens that are, are much slower than a black. But check this out, everyone thinks a black is sort of like, oh yeah, I don't need a, an SSD, I've got a Western Digital black. But yeah, check out this for a result in comparison to an SSD. And oh boy, you can already tell. Writes were on about 80 megabytes per second, and reads around the same, about 80 megabytes per second. If we stop it there, just check out those results, guys. We've got about 80 read and 80 write, which is not too bad for a hard drive, but still, look at it. There's such a, a crazy, crazy difference. And I, I, in today, today's day and age, I'm getting muddled up with my words here because I'm quite passionate about this, actually. I don't understand why people don't just stick an SSD as their boot disk. You know, SSDs are so affordable for the speed now. And if you're any kind of geek, SSD is the way to go, um, just for speed around the system. I couldn't imagine using my Mac Pro with a standard hard drive in it. When I first got it, I was using, I think, a Western Digital Blue as my boot disk. So, you know, applications would take four, five, six bounces in the dock to open and everything was really slow. This is a black drive, like I say. It's meant to be really speedy, but yeah. Um, obviously nowhere near as quick as an SSD. So that gives you guys some kind of comparison between an SSD and a hard drive. Of course, this hard drive is a SATA 3 hard drive, but it really, really won't make that much difference. So as you guys can probably tell, the MacBook Pro absolutely nailed it. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, I'm surprised the little pin on the uh, speedometer looking type clock here didn't snap off when it got to the end because it's just so ridiculously quick. They need to update this application with a little bit more scope in the, uh, in the clock here to um, to test these kind of systems because I assume they're just gonna keep getting quicker and quicker. Um, but I can't imagine they're gonna get much quicker than this until you know the next sort of big wave of, of revolution comes when it comes to uh, storage. Well, whatever I'm saying probably doesn't make sense, guys, because I'm just rambling now, because that result has indeed astonished me. And I was also really glad that I did the hard drive comparison, just to show you guys, if you weren't aware, how slow even your really decent hard drives are compared to an SSD. And I mean, what is a standard, you know, like Samsung 840 or whatever they are, 840 EVE or whatever, they're like, 100 pound for 256 gig or something or 128 gig, I don't know. I know they're really affordable these days and it's definitely, definitely worth the upgrade. Um, you know, storage is a big factor. Like this is quarter of a terabyte, which, you know, five years ago in a laptop, yeah, maybe decent, but today, you know, you may want to be carrying around more data with you. But I've got a 750 gigabyte USB 3.0 Western Digital Passport with a load of files on it. If I need a file, transfer it to the internal um, temporarily unplug the drive, do whatever I want with that file, I'm done. And 256 gig, it's the same as what I had in my old MacBook Pro, um, PowerBook, I had 120 gig, um, and I had 120 gig in my MacBook, so I've always had a low capacity. Granted, in college when I was using that 17 inch MacBook Pro, I had a 750 gigabyte drive in there, 750, 7200 RPM drive, which wasn't too bad, but you know, nowhere near nowhere near even this SSD, let alone this 
this PCIe based flash storage. Absolutely colossally awesome. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this comparison video. Keep your eyes peeled for more comparison videos with other benchmarks and whatnot, but I wanted to do the discs in their own video because the storage is definitely something to write home about when it comes to these new Macs. So thank you very much for watching everyone. As always, I really appreciate your support and I'll be seeing you in tomorrow's video. Exactly the same time.